All right, so we have this abstract parent class that we're still not doing anything with. So let's create a child class uh, that we can actually do something with. So it's like the parent is dead. You can't create an instance of the parent. I mean, this is just how I'm talking about it. You, uh, you, you can call these things anything you want. We're just going to call this child1. And it's going to be a public class. And importantly, it's going to extend, or you know, public class child1 extends what? Dead parent class. And that is really important. So this class is going to be very simple. And why is the compiler angry at us? Because we haven't implemented the abstract method draw. So we can click on that and say we want to draw, we, we will have that override method. Um, so let's say public, this is just going to be a constructor, child1, and let's just take in a color. Uh, the color, and color equals the color. Now why am I able to do that? There is no field in this class called color. What is this? Where does this come from, right? There's no, like, we've not written, like, a private thing, private color, color. That doesn't exist anywhere in our program. And, in fact, Java would not love it if we did that. It's fine. It's like a warning because we haven't. Uh, anyway. So, but where does this exist? It exists in the dead parent class, right there. Any... A uh, child of that class has access to these because we made these protected. If I, what if I did this? Private. Java's compiler is going to get angry with me because only the dead parent class has access to the color field. Uh, but we want it to be protected, of course, because we want the child class to be able to have access to it. And now all I need to do is um, draw something. So we're just going to g dot set color color and let's just draw something with the basic um, width and height uh, g dot fill rectangle and we just have to cast these to integers because they were initially described as doubles, which is probably unnecessary. Um, all right, so we have this class. Now, it actually has all sorts of behaviors that um, it doesn't seem to have at first glance, right? It is able to update itself and set its position based on key presses. Um, not quite yet, because we haven't had the panel send to the abstract dead parent class any key presses or the child class any key presses. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to start to make a list of objects um, that we are going to... Uh, keep track of. So let's head over to the um, the demo panel and we're going to create a couple different uh, fields in this panel. Now I didn't create these so you have to pay attention and kind of create these with me. So up in the fields let's create two more. So uh, two, these are going to be the entities or the children of the dead parent. Um, so we're going to create a private array list because we're going to have a bunch of them uh, of dead parent uh, class objects called, I don't know, we can call it children to be weird, children. All right, let's just do entities. Um, and then we'll have a private int called current entity or selection. Which one did I use? Current entity. Uh, and now we need to initialize those things like we always do. So we have this init method and we are going to initialize the entities down below. So entities equals new array list of dead parent class objects. And we're going to add a child one object to it. And we're just going to pass over blue. If you remember that uh, the child one constructor takes uh, one parameter, right? A color. You have to tell it what color to be. So if we head over to the demo panel, um, we have uh, 
an object. Now, we're not drawing it, we're not updating, we're not doing anything yet, so we're going to have to scroll through these things and actually update them all. And that's one thing I would like you to do, so go down to the update method. And update is anything that changes based on time. So, for, and we'll just, uh, yeah, we should do this. For update, uh, for dead, we're going to use an enhanced for loop, and I want you to get used to these. Uh, because we have an array list of dead parent class objects and we just want to iterate over all of them uh, and we'll just call this entity E and we say so take uh, each uh, entity contained in the array list called entities put it temporarily in the dead parent class object called E and remember all of child one objects are dead parent class objects and just do E.update Now, if you think about this, where is this update method? Well, it's in the dead parent class, and so what does update do? It sets the position. I mean, you could do other things in update, which is why I have it broken out like this. And set position does all this stuff. So if anybody has pressed a key, it does those things. I mean, not yet, because we haven't added the key listener uh, to the entities yet. Oh, and let's, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Also, we want to set the value, the initial value of um, current entity equal to zero, so the first item in the array list when the program starts. Um, okay, so we are updating those, but we need to create the image in memory still, so let's go down to that. And we're gonna use a similar thing uh, for uh, dead parent class e entities. We just wanna do e.draw. And so we'll draw them all regardless of which one is currently selected. The current selection thing deals more with uh, motion, and so we're going to get down uh, in here and deal with that. So um, let's go down now to uh, the key listener where we want to actually listen for keys for various things. So we're going to do entities uh, dot get, and we're going to get the current selection, current entity dot key pressed and what do we want to send we want to send the key code to this method so this is like a number that represents which key on the keyboard was pressed so we say e dot get key code all right and we're going to do a very similar thing for key release so when somebody releases a key we say e dot get current entity dot key you guessed it released and now, this is not some system that exists out there. We are creating this system. So we're just like saying, okay, demo panel, please listen for the keys. And when you hear a key, I want you to send that information to whichever of the current entities is selected. Um, and remember, entities is an array list of dead parent class objects, of which our child one class is one. Um, and now we need, uh, if the mouse is pressed, we're going to select different entities. So. When someone presses the mouse, even though we only have one, let's just get this out of the way right now. Um, the ball, dot mouse, yeah, we don't want to do that. So um, that was an echo from some earlier thing. So in this one, we can't use an enhanced for loop, and I'll tell you why as we go. So we set up for int equals i. We're going to scroll through the array list. i is less than entities.size, i++. plus plus. So I want to iterate over the array list. And then we want to say if entities dot get i, so get whichever, oops, get i dot is selected, and we need to send over some information now. So like, okay, imagine what's happening here. The mouse is being pressed, so there's this mouse event e, and e has all sorts of knowledge. E knows where on the screen the mouse was pressed, mouse x, mouse, that doesn't exist in e. But we can say e dot, oops, e dot get x, and e.getY. And so remember, we set up this. Um, oh, yeah. And then we just set current entity equals i. What is this really saying? OK, so entities is an array list of entities. We could have 15 of them on the screen. So we scroll through every time the mouse is pressed. We scroll through that whole list. And we check, hey, was the mouse pressed where you are? Remember, because entity has a, like every dead parent class has this method called isSelected, 
which just takes a mouse X and a mouse Y, an X and a Y position, and checks if those uh, if those X and Y coordinates are within the bounds of its X and Y coordinates. So it essentially just like says, hey, yeah, I'm the one that's selected, uh, right? So set the current entity to whatever item in the array list is me, so that when, from now on, until the mouse is clicked again, when a key is pressed, that information will get relayed to the correct entity. Okay, if that doesn't make sense, just sit on it for a while and think about how it works. All right, so now I think if we run this, we'll actually have something that we can control on the screen. And it should be initially set to 200, 200, look at that. And if you use the mouse and or the keys to um, move it around, the keys do stuff, which is awesome. And that's plenty for this video. All right, next video will be up in a minute.